Good evening, and welcome to this worship service of MCC Sacred Journey. Uh, I want to especially welcome those of you who are with us online, uh, watching this live now or later in the week, and we hope you'll give us a like or a love if you're on Facebook or YouTube and, uh, or some other comment, and let us know that you are here. We are gathered tonight knowing that God is present with us always. And if God is present with each one of us, then even if we're physically separated, we cannot be far apart. So as one people gathered in God's presence, let us affirm that we are at peace with one another. May the peace of God be with you. And please share a sign of that peace with whomever you might be with. And if you're watching us online, and if you have a candle or some other source of illumination, I invite you to light it now as we enter into sacred time. There we go sacred time. 
and sacred space. Our opening praise song tonight is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I invite us all to rise as we're able in body, mind, and or spirit and join in singing. Have you ever had a terrible day? Somebody's going, no, 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 never. Congratulations. Or a terrible week, or terrible, horrible, no good, very bad month, even a year. Well, the Bible has a lot to say about crying, believe it or not, and sadness, and all the other feelings that we go through as human beings. We may argue about whether all of the stories are all factual. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but they're all true in the sense that the Bible tells us the truth about the human condition. In particular, the Bible tells us the truth about death and misfortune and the loss of our dreams and all of the feelings that come with those experiences. It has songs of joy and praise, but also songs of lament, like the 137th Psalm. Let's begin our worship tonight by reading a portion of that Psalm responsively. I'll be the one if you will be the many. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the hearts, there we hung up our hearts. For there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of How could we sing our God song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If, if I, I do not, not remember you, if I, I do not set Jerusalem, Jerusalem above my highest joy. joy. Amen. 
to invite Cheryl to come forward now and read the scriptures for us tonight. One moment, please. <clears throat> After saying this, Martha went to her sister Mary and whispered in her ear, the teacher is here and is asking for you. The moment she heard that, she jumped up and ran out to him. Jesus had not yet entered the town, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. <coughs> Excuse me. When her sympathizing Judea friends saw Mary run off, they followed her, thinking she was on her way to the tomb to weep there. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at his feet, saying, Teacher, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Judeans with her sobbing, a deep anger welled up within him. Within him, He said, where did you put him? Teacher, come and see, they said. Now Jesus wept. The Ju Judeans said, see how deeply he loved him. Thank you so much. I have a question for you. It's a trick question. Why are grapes never lonely? Because they always hang out in bunches. People are kind of like grapes that way. People are designed, we're designed to hang out in bunches. We're not designed to hang out and thrive all by ourselves. Tonight we hear a story about one bunch of people that Jesus hung out with and about how he felt about them. So what does this story have to say to us? Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, I thank you for this day, for the beauty of this day, for the harvest season and for all of your blessings to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our, all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight so that together we might all discover your word and your wisdom for us right here and right now. Amen. Well, the scripture portion that Sherilyn read tonight contains the Bible's shortest verse, John eleven thirty five. 35. In the King James Version and in the New Revised Standard Version, which you may be more familiar with, it translates into just two words, Jesus wept. Jesus was close to Lazarus. Some people have speculated that Lazarus was the one referred to in John as the beloved disciple. Some others have even speculated that he was Jesus' lover. Does the Bible say that? No. Does the Bible say it wasn't so? No. We have no way of knowing. But the important thing is that Lazarus was very important to Jesus. So that the news that Lazarus was dead broke Jesus' heart. He couldn't let that stand. And he raised Lazarus from the dead. But what I want us to remember most of all this evening is that shortest verse, Jesus wept. Jesus was feeling a deep emotion and he let it show. He let it out. He cried. When someone's life comes to an end, or sometimes when an activity or a community comes to an end, it is disruptive. 
we feel as though there's a place in our lives that's empty. For example, in March, 2020, in the beginning weeks of the COVID shutdown of this building in particular, after we got over the initial shock, I'm guessing that some of us kept thinking on Wednesday afternoons, it's Wednesday, there's supper at church tonight at 5.30. No wait, no supper. No way to get a meal that somebody else cooked or no need to cook something to share or pick up something to share and no opportunity to gather with our friends and play games. We adjusted, but I know there was a lot of sadness about missing those gatherings. There was a grief process involved with that change. In every significant change in our lives, there is grief. And it has its stages, you may have heard of them. We experience, first of all, or, well, I could say first of all, it's usually first on the list, but these stages don't necessarily come in any given order. And we can go through them at any time and go through them all again and again. But the first one on the list is denial. When we try not to recognize that the change is happening or that the death has happened. This is the way our body selves protect us from the grief that we're not ready yet to feel and process. And then there's anger. When instead of crying, we lash out at whomever we may think is responsible for the change. For example, many years ago, when my father died of cancer, I felt angry at the doctors who I thought were going to make him well, or at least extend his life. They were powerless to do either. And after a while, I understood the medical reasons for that. But I was angry that I was gonna to have to go on living without my dad, angry at the changes in my life that would have to happen, angry at the things I was going to do that he would not be there to share. And it was easier to blame the doctors than to feel the anger. That anger is also in scripture. In Psalm 137, which we read at the opening of the service, I deliberately skipped the last part of it in which the Israelites who are in exile in Babylon, after promising they will never forget Jerusalem, rain down a curse on their enemies. They say, blessed will be those who take your babies and dash them against the rocks. I didn't think we needed to repeat that in church necessarily, but that anger is there. It's not nice. It probably doesn't have survival value to act out against your imprisoners. But that was something that people felt. That anger is real. And it is okay to feel it. We can also experience bargaining, often with God. God, what can I do to change the situation? God, I'm praying, please let dad be well. Please let dad be well. If he didn't get better, is it because I didn't pray hard enough or sincerely enough? And I know now it's not a matter of how hard you pray or how sincerely you pray. But we try to bargain with God. If I do this, give me what I want. Give me this thing that, that give me the relief from this change. It seems inevitable. Or if I just do such and so differently, can we avoid closing the church? And it's a natural thing to do when we're facing something we don't want to acknowledge. It is yet another way of protecting ourselves 
from feeling the hurt of losing a community or losing a loved one. The hurt may just be too overwhelming for us. And it may take a time before we're able to feel it. And then there's depression, which um, speaking for myself, for me, depression feels mostly like not feeling much of anything at all. It's a natural feeling, but it keeps us from moving on. It keeps us from seeing the new possibilities on the other side of a loss. It just keeps us sitting or lying in bed or walking around or whatever we do. It keeps us kind of stuck in feeling miserable. And it's okay to feel miserable but God does not mean for us to feel miserable all the time. Amen. In order to get to that other side, sooner or later, we've got to feel the hurt. Good news, bad news. We need to cry. Maybe even to scream, if we can do so safely. I learned the hard way it was not okay to scream in the house when the cat was around. I had a cat in Boston who was terrified of me for about a year or so. We need to feel that grief in our spirit. And we need to give it expression in our bodies. Not necessarily for a long time. Definitely not forever. But when we feel that hurt, we have to allow ourselves to feel it. Just as our skin itches when a wound heals, our body selves hurt as we get over a loss. I remember Toni Morrison's words at one point in her novel, Beloved. She said, anything dead coming back to life again hurts. Anything dead coming back to life again hurts. And the unfortunate truth is, if you don't feel it, you can't heal it. So in particular, regarding this church community, I hope that each of us in our own way will let ourselves feel whatever sadness or fear or loss comes to us as we bring this part of our sacred journey this journey together as a church to an end. There will be times not to let our feelings show and that's okay, but there must also be some times to let our feelings out. I think about the vigils of the princes that I saw this weekend with uh, King, it's hard for me to call him King, King Charles III and his siblings standing around Queen Elizabeth's coffin, and then the grandchildren at another time, standing around the coffin in silence with their heads bowed, keeping vigil over Her Majesty's body. It was their job during that ritual to be stoic, to be calm, to reassure the nation that England would go on even though Queen Elizabeth II had died. I'm sure they're not always being so stoic in their private time. Fortunately, there's a curtain over their private time and everybody in the world doesn't have to know what they're doing. When my life is over, I have just one question for God. Why did you create us for love and then make it hurt so much to lose someone or something that we love? Couldn't you have made it easier? It just doesn't seem fair. But that is the way it is. And as the ancient poet put it, it is better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. What a boring, dull, 
uninteresting life we would have without ever having given our hearts away to anyone or anything. Hurting when we lose someone or something is part of loving and there's no way around it. I wanna end by sharing a song with you. Uh, it was written by Libby Roderick and uh, it comes from the AIDS years. It goes something like this. It's a human thing, a holy thing to love what death can take. It's a human thing to love the thing whose loss will cause our hearts to break. It's a funny thing, we can't stop ourselves, even as we wait for the final hush. It's a human thing, a funny thing, a holy thing to love. I once loved a human being and then watched him slip away. A fist smashed through my grand design and I sat alone and I could not pray. But sometimes on a sleepless night, Silent and frozen inside my fears, the angels came and circled me and sang a song only spirit hears. Have you seen how the world moves on? Every hand we touch will go. Every face we cherish will disappear. Taking everything that we used to know, but somewhere deep inside our bones, we must be tied to the morning star. For in knowing that our hearts will break, we love each other all the more. It's a human thing, a holy thing, to love what death can take. It's a human thing to love the thing whose loss would cause our hearts to break. It's a funny thing, we can't stop ourselves, even as we wait for the final hush. It's a human thing, a funny thing, a holy thing to love. So may we continue to love. Amen. Our response to the message is for those tears I die. Um, if it's not familiar to you, I think you will probably find the chorus pretty accessible. I invite us to join in singing. And we'll sing along with the author, Marcia Stevens.
the time in our service when we have an opportunity to be generous as God is generous. And if you'd like to, if you're online and you'd like to contribute to our church, you can go to www.mccsacredjourney.org slash giving. There's also a link here for MCC's Ukraine Relief Fund. It's http colon double slash weblink dot donorperfect.com slash MCC disaster relief. Whatever 
you do. I invite you to make a gift of money or of time or of stuff and be generous to somebody else around you. Will you pray with me, please? Holy One, we know that your grace and your unconditional love are gifts freely given to us. We know there's no obligation to give you anything in return. However, we know that you cheerfully accept every gift that we make that comes from our hearts. Holy One, I pray for those who are going to give and for those who are not able to give. I pray that you bless us with open hearts so that we will not be closed to the gifts that you give to us, to receiving the gifts that you give to us, nor to helping out somebody else in need. Holy One, we pray that you guide our church to use the gifts that we bring to make a way for your love to spread throughout our world. Amen. Let's go to God in a spirit of prayer. As Christians filled with the Holy Spirit, we continue Jesus' ministry and bring the good news to a world that is often divided and troubled. Love is alive and life has the final word over death. God is with us in the things and people that give us joy. Let us lift up names of places in our lives or in this world that are deserving of thanks. We lift up all the farmers and all the other vendors at the farmer's market.
for these and for the places that remain in the silence of our hearts. God, in your love, hear our prayer. And there are many places in this world where uncertainty reigns. Let us lift up names of places in the world that need our prayers. Puerto Rico, and Haiti, Alaska. For these and for the places that remain in the silence of our hearts, God, in your love, hear our prayer. And there are many people who are walking the dark woods for various reasons. Let us lift up names of those who need our prayers. Ian. Susan. Lamella. Doug and Nelson. Mark and Bruthy. For these and for those whose names remain in the silence of our hearts, God, in your love, hear our prayer. And together let us pray as Jesus taught us using the words that are on the screen, or whatever words bring you closest to the Holy One. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your dominion come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the dominion and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Here at MCC Sacred Journey, as in all metropolitan community churches, we celebrate an open communion every week. What that means, among many other things, is We don't know how you understand communion. We don't know how you understand being in union with the living Christ. But whatever your understanding is, we're not here to check off a dogma, any dogma. If you want to participate in God's welcome table, you are welcome. And so I invite you to join me in singing as we retell the story of what Jesus did the last time that he was at dinner with his friends. <laughs>
to pass around the COVID safe communion cups that we use here at the church. And if you're watching this online, whatever food and drink you have with you, whether it's bread and wine or bread and grape juice or something to eat and something to drink, I invite you to eat and drink with us. I'm gonna wait till Ginny is seated and then we'll consume together. Wisdom has baked her bread and poured her wines, and her table is set. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. So come and let us share the feast, the bread of heaven. And the cup of freedom. Holy One, I pray your blessing on each person who's participating in this table. You know what their needs are, and I pray that you meet the needs that they may have at this moment. And let them know, let them know that you've got their back no matter what's going on with them. Remember always that God's got your back that you are beautiful, made in the image of God, and that you are worthy of all the blessings that come into your life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm going to stand beside the table in case anyone would like individual prayer, and we'll play some music while we're doing that.
closing song tonight is How Could Anyone? Um, and we're going to sing it a cappella. So if you don't know the song, um, we're going to sing it through enough times that you can probably pick it up. So I invite us to rise as we're able in body, mind, and or spirit and join in singing. Mm -hmm. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful. How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. That could use some harmony. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. One more time. How could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your loving is a miracle. How deeply you're connected to my soul. Amen. And before we go out, I invite you to repeat after me. I am God's beloved. God's beloved. Deeply loved, Deeply loved. Richly, gifted. richly gifted, highly favored, highly favored. Abundantly, blessed. abundantly blessed. Now, please look at somebody else and say to them, you are, you are. God's beloved, God's beloved. Deeply, loved. deeply loved, richly gifted, richly gifted. Highly, favored. highly favored, abundantly blessed. Abundantly blessed. And together we are. We are God's beloved, God's beloved, deeply loved, deeply loved, richly gifted, richly gifted, highly favored, highly favored, abundantly blessed, abundantly blessed. And so let us take that blessing from the one who is creator and Christ and spirit and more names than we can imagine. God loves us. Let's go share that love and go in peace. Amen. Um, I'm going to cycle through the announcements. The um, important things are, in case you missed it last Sunday, the congregation voted that the church will close at the end of October. So please save these dates, September 22nd for a dinner and September 29th for our last worship service. Uh, this week we have a board meeting at 6.30 on Tuesday. On, in the MCC Zoom room. And Blue Ridge Pride is September 24th, this coming Saturday. If you're going up to Asheville for Pride, stop by and see us. Uh, and maybe better yet, sit down and visit with us for a while. God bless you and have a blessed week.
transgressions If such a thing as grace exists Grace was made for love like this Such a thing as grace exists.